I think it was a good discussion. Uh, I think people listened. Uh, people had some things reconfirmed to them. I think some people uh, knew, uh, saw different per perspectives on things. So I thought it was good. I think we have to be willing to have honest conversations with one another. And a conversation is a two-way street. Yes, we can express our point of view, but it's equally or maybe even more important for us to listen. We've got two ears and one mouth. And if we would do more listening and then thinking about the uh, points of views of other people, I think we can a little uh, eliminate a lot of the uh, political controversy that we seem to be running up against. Well, I think number one, we have to listen. Uh, number two, we have to try, if best we can, to agree on what's actually happening. Is sea level really rising? Yes. Uh, do we believe in more CO2 in the atmosphere? Hopefully, yes, or that's what we believe. Is there more uh, ocean acidification? Yes. What's the connection between ocean acidification and more CO2 in the atmosphere? But I think we've got to co come at the very beginning. We've got to try to agree on the facts. And then once we agree on the facts, then I think we can at least begin to say this is our goal and then agree on the goal, and then what we argue about is how do we get to the goal. So I think it's very important in any kind of a discussion or argument that we initially agree on a goal, and then we can argue about how do we get there. One of my great frustrations is that we don't think long term and we think short term. And I use the expression of this one letter in the English alphabet that I'd like to turn upside down. It's the letter M. And if we could get people to turn M upside down and get a W, and get people to look at not just what's in it for me, but what's it in for everybody. And me thinking is a very much of a today thinking. We thinking is thinking about other people, new generations, for me, it's thinking about my children, six grandchildren. So I think you've got to try to get people thinking about we and not me. One of my frustrations in the United States is we're so short-term oriented. It's true of earnings per share and stock market prices. What the price of a stock does today or tomorrow is totally irrelevant. What's really important is what will it be worth 20 years from now? And many other countries around the world understand long-term thinking. Think about the Chinese. They don't want to win the battle necessarily. They want to win the war. And we as humans in the United States need to be thinking about how do we win the war. We may lose some battles along the way. We may have to move further inland. We may need to take other short-term actions that will help short term, but long term we've got to be thinking about what's going to be happening long term and how can we take actions today that will impact the long term. Uh, I, I, I think that it's, it's not up to me to try to write the plan for Savannah but rather it's important for everybody to have an opportunity to participate in the questioning and the answering of things that deal with the long term. If I go to the top of the mountain and I decree that X, Y, and Z needs to happen, that's great for me, but I have no buy-in. And in order to get things to change, you've got to have buy-in from all of the individuals possible in a community. And that starts with sort of agreeing on the what, and then all of these people will come up with the how and the why answers.
You know, I think we've got to we've got to talk to people with whom we either disagree or with whom we have different experiences or with whom we're just of a different uh, uh, social economic uh, fabric. We've got uh, places in Savannah where very wealthy people have retired from the Northeast and they come to the party with a certain perspective. You've got people like me that grew up in Savannah but went away, saw what was happening in other parts of the country and really the world, and I have a perspective, and my group has a perspective. There are other people that have been in Savannah, have never been anywhere else, and that some are wealthy, some are very poor. We've got to try to be empathetic, and I think if we can be empathetic, we can solve a lot of problems. When you're not empathetic, you don't put yourself in the shoes of the other person. How would I feel if? Fill in the blank. How would I feel if about something else? Fill in the blank. Well, I think people don't listen and therefore they don't uh, agree uh, on uh, what's happening initially and then what do we have to do to uh, uh, address it. A hundred and fifty years from now, our long-term goal ought to be that everyone has a certain level of comfort, uh, prosperity, um, education. Uh, we're not ever going to have a total level play playing field. There will always be some people that will be closer to the top and some, some people will be on the bottom. What I'd like to see in 150 years is a more level playing field where the disparities between the very top in whatever the category may be and the very bottom in that category are closer together and not so far apart. I think the, the real takeaway from today is that there are a lot of people that are very sincere, very interested in the long term, very focused on what can they do as individuals today that will have an impact on future generations and even people that they won't know that may exist 20, 100 years from now. So I think it was just very inspiring to see people come together and they weren't just thinking about today but they were thinking about tomorrow and what they can do today that will impact tomorrow. Well, I live on a farm, and I've got six grandchildren. And what I try to do as a grandfather is to take them out on the river and ex let them experience the river. Let them go out in the woods and experience the woods. We grow ginger and turmeric organically. Get them to understand what are the do's and don'ts of the business operation of growing organic ginger and uh, turmeric. So I think it starts with a parent and a grandparent touching and feeling with their grandchildren or children, letting them experience for themselves. It's not so much what I tell them, but it's what they experience themselves, I think, that really has the lasting impression. You can tell somebody not to put their hand on a hot burner, and that's great, but until they actually put their hand on that top hot burner and they get their fingers burnt, they don't really understand. So I think we need to take people out after a hurricane, for example, and show them why trees fall over. We need to take them out and show them flooding and what causes flooding. We need to take them out and get them to experience the world uh, themselves for themselves and not just what grandfather or grandmother or mom and dad, for that matter, uh, have to tell them.